your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. If you like the gift of giving, then you may want to check out this small Grand Bahama-based business. As our Jamila Mizek tells us, this mother-daughter duo can create greeting cards and invitations for any special occasion. Here's the story. They may look like ordinary gift boxes, but they are actually personalized greeting cards. These handmade creations are the brainchild of Create by Sharmark, a mother-daughter duo. Mom entrepreneur Chardonnay Francis says the business venture started out in 2019 after she was unsatisfied with her options. We went into a store and we wanted to purchase a card and of course it wasn't personalized and it was pretty expensive for a basic card and we wanted to go ahead and make something that's even better and personalized and that's going to actually make the moment matter and have memories included in it as well. She explains the difference between their creations and the generic card. With our cards, of course, they're personalized and they're handmade. And um, we go into detail in terms of what the person is looking for who's receiving the card or the invite. And, you know, just try to make it, um, if their favorite color is red, we try to cater to red. If they have a theme that they really like or a sports um, team that they like, we try to incorporate that as well. Now Chardonnay's two-year-old daughter Charlie is also a part of the business. She shares the importance of supporting small businesses and shopping locally. So of course, um, supporting me supports the economy because I shop here when I purchase my items from my boxes. Um, and of course, I'm, like I said, I, I, this is my sole um, provision for my family. So you're not only supporting me, you're supporting my dream and you're supporting my family. She's encouraging anyone with an idea to take a leap of faith and step outside the box. I was a trainer before I actually left my job and I, I went and pursued something that I really love to do. I've been a crafter for um, Charlie's age and so I love doing crafted items. Of course, Corona came last year and it, it was difficult but I pushed and um, it brings you joy to wake up every morning and do something that you actually love. And like I, like, I don't think I was able to say, but we give the gift of joy. And that makes me happy to, you know, I think joy is reciprocated. So it's really the transfer of energy. So that's something that I would say, go for it. Now you can find them on all social media platforms at Sharma Creates or 552-1913. Shamila Misik. ZNS Network News. Pilot Club International bringing smiles to the faces of youngsters at the children's home. The club donating six tricycles and helmets in keeping with their injury awareness campaign. Governor-elect Karen Ferguson Bain. ride a fair where we want our children to learn to be safe as they play as they get their exercise they're also protecting their brain and so they will carry that information with them as they are small little young adults straight in through being older adults and so we want them to know that you can play but you can be safe as you play and we know that at the grand bahama children's home they are always looking for our civic organizations and nonprofit groups to come and help out because again the directors can't do it by themselves the executive directors can't do it by themselves and so it takes a village in order for this establishment to work director of the grand bahama children's home sarah kirkby said that they are certainly thankful for the donation we were a bit short on uh, bikes and um, other recreational activities for them actually in the home. So this is fantastic. Right now they're only, they only have one little tricycle that they kind of been fighting over for a couple of uh, months. So this is gonna be amazing for our children. Uh, we are continued though to be amazed by the donations that pour in for our home. It's like everybody's taken that, it's a village, Karen, and just embraced it. And so we cannot say thank you enough. If you wanna find out what we need, please give us a call, go online, find us on our website or on our Facebook page, and um, we just can't thank you enough. 
And get this, St. Paul's Methodist College also making a double donation to the Grand Bahama Children's Home. Just recently, seventh graders made a financial donation to the home, and then the school's alumni heard about the kind act and decided that they too would give back. Catrice Roberts Robinson says they wanted to match the donation of the students, but the money raised far exceeded their expectations. It was a great initiative for those seventh graders to, you know, take time out, taking their money from their lunch to make that donation to her. And it just shows us if they can see the need as adults, we should also see the need as well. We have a WhatsApp chat group of um, St. Paul's students that went to St. Paul's between 1969 and 1980 from all over the world, UK, Canada, Italy, and China. And we heard about the donation that was done by the students of St. Paul's and we decided to match it. And we ended up going quite overboard with it. We ended up raising over $2,500 just with the persons that were in the chat, in the group. And we made the donation to the children's home. Again, director at the Children's Home, Sarah Kirkby, says that they are just so grateful to the past and current students. And she says that raising the children in the home is truly a community effort and any assistance is appreciated. First of all, to the seventh graders, we were absolutely overwhelmed. When we went to the school, we didn't know what we were going to receive. To find out that they gave up lunch, you know, three days a week was incredible. I don't think I've ever missed a meal. And for them to do that and raise $147 was great. And when we went to the school, they were so excited about it. And they've actually asked to do more with our children, which is great for us because we need that connection for our kids. I'm so thankful to the wonderful alumni all over the world, not just here in, in the Bahamas, but those that are in Nassau, those that are abroad. And you don't realize what that money actually does for us. You know, feeding 30 children takes a lot. And so it's just phenomenal for us. You know, we do have a beautiful new home. We've been very blessed with some great gifts, but we still have to pay bills like everyone else. Certainly good news there. And that is a look at stories making news. Let's take a look at what's happening in sports with our Jay Philippe. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to ZNS Total Sports right here in the North. Tabernacle Baptist Academy track and field team recently traveled to Central Florida where they took part in the Easter track and field meet. 16 athletes along with head coach Nikito Johnson and team manager Sophia Higgs traveled to Altura, Florida with the team at the Santa Fe Last Chance track meet. Coach Johnson says the Falcons showed up and showed out in style. I got two boys in the under-17 boys division who qualified for this year's Carifta Games. Um, overall, our performance was exceptional. Um, the, the reception by the, the hosts, they were very welcoming. They were very impressed with us. Um, they, they, they thought that our kids could not, you know, it, it was just a, a meet where, hey, this team from the Bahamas is, is, is the real deal. One of those athletes qualifying in the 100 meters is Isaiah Bain. At the start of the race, I made sure I relaxed my body so I could have you know, got a better start. As soon as I heard the starter gun go off, I made sure I was able to get a powerful drive, use my arm so I could get more elevation. Also making the A standard qualifying mark in the 100 meters was Lyndon Johnson. For our first official meet of the year, I'd feel very good. I'd feel healthy. My, I'd, feel, I'd feel pretty good about my performance, you know. Pulling off a surprise performance was Carifta hopeful Ashlea Hewitt. I came first in the 100 meters, came fifth overall, and, you know, just work hard. Do my coach tell me, came out the blocks, did good, you know. Overall head coach Nikita Johnson says it was a great turnout by his team. At that meet, everything was so organized. Everybody followed the protocol um, of masks, and, and they, they kept their social distance. Everything was in place, and we could do it here. And as to why is it not happening here or not being allowed to happen here, like that, you know, it, it, it raises my eyebrow. But the most important thing is my kids needed a meet. And it, it was more feasible for us to go to the U.S. and to even to travel to Nassau where they had a meet on the weekend. It was much more feasible to go to the U.S. And, and I'm happy that we did because I got to see where my kids are. They're in great shape. And right now, meets is all they need. And I guarantee you will have more better performances from my kids. 
Switching gears now to basketball, Cheval Butters has picked up his second NCAA Division I offer. The 6'8", 210-pound forward received an official offer from the Texas Rio Grande Valley University. Listed as a two-star recruit by verbal commits, Butters is in the midst of his final season with Elevation Prep in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The Grand Bayman native spent the previous season with Aspire Academy in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's a quick check on sports right here in the North. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed.